Okay, okay yeah. let's start. Yes. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, at this uh, Meshroom Analysis Vision uh, session at the Open Source uh, Days 2020. Uh, first of all, first, we would like to thank the Academy Software Foundation uh, for having invited us uh, to these uh, panels of prestigious open source software. So I'm Benoît Mojan and I'm here with uh, Fabien Castan. So uh, to, uh, to give you a little bit of context, uh, then, oh well, yeah, the agenda of the, the, the session. So we'll start with uh, an overview of Meshroom Analysis Vision. Then we'll go to uh, the recent evolution of Meshrooms uh, regarding uh, the next release. Uh, we'll uh, go through also the next steps to come, uh, we figure out, and then we'll talk a little bit about uh, our community and then we'll switch to the Q&A that you can do uh, with the, the Zoom application. So uh, as a start, uh, so we, Fabien and I are, are working at Micros Image. So Micros is a, is a VFX studio, an animation studio. Um, we are part of the Technicolor group and uh, Micros is uh, positioned across the three service lines of uh, the production services of Technicolor. Uh, on the left hand side, you can see that uh, we are positioned on the advertisement service line under the brand name Micros NPC Advertising. In the middle, you can see that uh, we are positioned also on the visual effects uh, industry for films. Um, and on the right hand side, you can see that we are positioned on the animation uh, service line for feature films and serials. So we, we are located in Paris, but uh, we also have premises uh, in Belgium, in Brussels and Liège, and uh, in Canada, in Montreal. Uh, and we have some facilities with our, our friends of Technicolor in London and in India too. So to illustrate uh, this, uh, we're gonna show you our demo reel uh, on uh, this screen. So that, that, that was to give you a bit of context of uh, the project within uh, Micros Image. And now we're gonna have uh, an overview of Meshroom Analysis Vision. So uh, what are the motivations of the project? Uh, uh, the, the motivation was to improve, in fact, the productivity on uh, 3D assets creation uh, uh, for visual effects. So that concerns the real world objects that need to be uh, changed by visual effects. It also deals with uh, shooting set extensions, or it could also, also deal with the set survey. Uh, that serves as a reference for the camera tracking. Um, so in fact, uh, we can see that photogrammetry is uh, the kind of root of all the visual effects uh, to achieve uh, this kind of, uh, of uh, photorealistic uh, matching between uh, the real world and um, the computer graphic worlds. Uh, so you have uh, these examples for the different uh, activities we have at Micros. So what is the main concept of Meshroom? So Meshroom is the front-end application and uh, 
as a reminder, this is a, a photogrammetry pipeline, which is made basically of uh, three steps. The first steps concern the, the analysis of the input images. And then the second step is uh, the estimation of the cameras that uh, provides a, a sparse point cloud uh, with the intrinsic parameters of the camera and the camera positioning. Uh, and the third step is a dense point cloud uh, with uh, the estimation of the object surfaces and uh, the result uh, is a match which is textured by the, the input images. So this is the classical uh, three steps of the photogrammetry pipeline. So Meshroom again is the, is the front end application. Uh, the user interface is made of two parts. The high level UI uh, uh, is uh, what is used for the automatic process. The, the end user, the computer graphic artist can drop, drag and drop the images on the, on the left hand side and then uh, uh, launch and submit uh, the, the process of the 3D reconstruction. And on the lower end of the graphic, the user interface, you have uh, the nodal pipeline for expert users where you can tweak your parameters or you can uh, uh, play around with your nodes, you can uh, uh, customize your pipeline and so on. We, we, we give you some details on that uh, later on. So uh, what are the, the key points of Meshroom? Uh, so as I said, there is a, a default workflow for all the standard use case. Uh, but uh, Meshroom is not a black box, so it's, uh, it's a nodal editor where uh, you can uh, uh, tweak the different uh, nodes and also you can have the results of each node in a file with a caching mechanism. And you can also uh, uh, view the results of each node uh, within the, the interface of Meshroom, uh, whether it is 2D uh, images or, or 3D results. This nodal pipeline enables you also to build up uh, some custom pipelines. We'll show you some examples. Um, you can also augment your reconstruction uh, to iterate the scene uh, uh, reconstruction with a couple of uh, additive images. Uh, one of the key points also is uh, that we are able to submit uh, the, the computing on a render farm. You can submit it on locally, but you can use a render farm uh, because uh, photogrammetry is, uh, uh, needs a lot of resource. Uh, there's also in the pipeline uh, um, mesh post-processing. Uh, for instance, uh, we can uh, simplify or we can smooth the mesh. And another cool feature also is that uh, uh, if you do retopology in third-part software, you can retexture uh, your, your simplified mesh uh, with uh, input images and you can see the results within the, the same 3D reference world in the Meshroom interface. So here we have an example of, uh, of the render farm video. Um, in fact, what you can see uh, is that on the, on the, on the right hand side, uh, that some nodes that are parallelized uh, onto the, the render nodes. Uh, here, in fact, it's an implementation uh, with our, our dispatcher, which is a tractor. Uh, and uh, the other cool thing is that you can follow uh, the, the rendering process within Meshroom for each node. So regarding the, the technology stack, so as I said, the Meshroom is the front-end application. Uh, it's, a, it's a script mode uh, UI, so that uh, enables it to be uh, more evolutive and to be tested more rapidly uh, in Python and Qt. And the back-end is Alice Vision Framework with all the C++ and uh, CUDA libraries uh, to perform the computation with uh, the best uh, performance. Um, we also have, uh, we, we rely in fact uh, intensively on uh, standard file formats uh, like uh, Alembic or OBG for the, for the 3D files and uh, EXR for the, the 2D files. Um, we also, uh, we have made uh, the, the backbone on uh, other open source projects. Uh, this is uh, a few of them uh, that are being used within uh, Alice Vision. Uh, uh, we have to mention on top of it the VCPKJ initiative as well, yeah, which is not on this list. Um, and uh, regarding the, the architecture, we have developed also a couple of plugins. One is for Maya, uh, which you can see uh, in the, this video. So uh, we can export uh, the meshes and the camera from Meshroom and uh, use them uh, into Maya so that uh, um, the CG artist uh, can see within Maya what are the different parts of the point clouds that are provided by these images, where are the camera located within the 3D scene. 
So it's a, a great uh, tool to help for them to do the retopology, for instance, uh, in Maya. Um, so this so this Maya tool has been developed at Micros, but uh, what's interesting is the community of Meshroom has developed uh, other plugins. For instance, the guy from SideFX uh, implemented an integration of Alice Vision pipeline uh, into Houdini with uh, the game development tool set. Uh, uh, another uh, community uh, add-on has been done for some guys uh, to, in Blender. In fact, uh, these uh, plugins uh, facilitate uh, the import of Meshroom and the management of the data of Meshroom into Blender to clean the mesh or to do your retopology or whatever. So we give you here two examples. So that was uh, a quick overview of Meshroom and Alice Vision. And now Fabien is taking over to speak about uh, the evolutions of Meshroom and the new version coming. <laughs> Hello. So uh, I will present the new features that will uh, arrive in the new version. Uh, so first of all, we uh, uh, in this new version, there will be a new pipeline for the creation of uh, HDR panorama. And uh, so it uh, supports standard optics, but it also has a specific support for full fisheye images. Um, and uh, also it can take uh, advantage of uh, motorized head system. Um, so this new pipeline, there, we will see the two parts. So the first part is the creation of the HDR images. So we will have the um, multi-bracketing LDR images and we have to uh, analyze them and fuse them into HDR. Uh, so in uh, our implementation in Meshroom, it's split in three nodes. The first step is the sampling, is the analysis of the images and selection of the most robust pixels to extract information. Uh, when we have done that, we can uh, do the calibration. Um, and uh, in this calibration, the idea is to recover the camera response function from the multi bracketing. And, uh, and finally, uh, we have to uh, we use this calibration to fuse our input images uh, into a single HDR image. And uh, so it's, uh, it's quite standard. And, uh, but we have uh, a specific option to be able to um, analyze the highlights. So the idea is that one of the use cases is the creation of uh, images for relighting. Uh, and in relighting, the most important aspect is to be able to make a big difference between the real source of the lighting. So if you have the sun in your images, for instance. And, um, uh, and so when you do that, it's not possible during the acquisition to be able to recover the real value of the sun. You, you, you are never able to make the, um, um, uh, with your camera, you are not able to capture the amount of light you get from the sun. And uh, so we detect those pixels that are saturated in all images and provide some post-processing stuff. Um, we have also improved the image viewer of Meshroom to be able to uh, see those images so we can uh, uh, visualize them with a floating point visualization and interactively adjust gain and, and gamma to be able to uh, see the values and also the color picker to really um, analyze what we get. And, um, and then we have the other part of the, this pipeline uh, for the creation of the 360 images. Um, so for that, the f so in, in our implementation, it's split in four nodes. So the first step uh, is when we are using uh, fisheye images, we have to detect the fisheye circle or we can manu manually adjust it as, as we can see on the video. And, um, and in the case of, uh, uh, when we have a motorized head system with a lot of images, we can retrieve the files from the motorized um, uh, head system and, uh, and use that to initialize the position of the camera. Um, then the other step, the estimation will uh, recover uh, the relative rotation between all the cameras. Uh, then the warping will convert all our input images into the 360 coordinate system. And finally, we have uh, the um, compositing uh, and uh, we use uh, the standard multiband blending algorithm to be able to compensate for slight variation of uh, illumination and uh, being able to keep the, uh, 
pixel precision. And we have also implemented the graph cut to be able to select the best area to make the transition between your different input images. So that's it for the AGR uh, panorama pipeline. And now we can switch to the features regarding the photogrammetry pipeline. Uh, so, um, first of all, for the photogrammetry pipeline, we have improved the texturing in the context of topology. Uh, so, usually when you have the, uh, you get a really dense me mesh with thousands of vertices. And after manual topology, uh, here in this uh, really extreme example, we have just few triangles and it's really challenging to texture it properly from the raw input images. And so we have improved uh, the solution to be able to uh, better propagate the visibility to be able to uh, generate more uh, proper texture on these uh, cases. Um, we have also added a new 3D gizmo on the meshing node. Uh, this allows to um, uh, define a bonding box from your uh, SFM. So, uh, in output of the SFM, you have the sparse point cloud, and you can use that to put a bonding box and select the sub part of your scene that you want to reconstruct. Um, and uh, it, you can also duplicate the mesh, the meshing node, and put different bonding box. So you can make a, a kind of set survey of the full location uh, with uh, a certain amount of density, and then you are able to just put another bonding box on a small detail to be able to generate a more precise reconstruction of one object in this place. And uh, this gizmo is also integrated in the SFM transform to make a, a manual transformation or manual change of the coordinate system in the in output of the SFM. Uh, in terms of visualization, we have also added a tool to be able to look through the 3D camera that we have uh, found and uh, we can um, overlay the original input images and distorted images to uh, see in detail the variation. Uh, on the more technical side, uh, we have also uh, new visualization tools. Uh, so here, for instance, we can visualize the feature points that we have extracted on the 2D images. So we can see on the left, uh, the blue and, and uh, green uh, feature points are two, two different kinds of features we extract on the image. And then we can see uh, in orange the points that have been matched to other images. And finally, in red, we can see the points that are really in the 3D space at the end and that are really used to solve the camera positions. And on the right, if you, if, when we zoom in detail of the image, we can see in blue the sixth feature point with the scale and orientation. And we can see the, in red the 3D projection of the same point. And this the small segment in red between the two is the um, projection error that we get. Uh, there are also some widgets to um, visualize the statistics of uh, the SFM. Uh, it can have some statistic per view and some global statistics. Uh, we have also added some visualization uh, for the resource usages. And another point that we have in photogrammetry is that we don't know the coordinate system in output. All our uh, geometric information is relative. And so um, there is a new option in the SFM transform that allows to uh, change the coordinate system at the end and rescale it. Uh, so if we put marker in our setup, uh, we can automatically rescale it to the correct scale and this allows to make measurement from, uh, from that. And we have also um, added new nodes to make alignment between scene and transfer poses between scenes. So if you have an acquisition uh, rig with multi-camera system, um, you are now able to um, make a first reconstruction with, uh, with the calibration, for instance. And, uh, and then we use that uh, as an initialization for other reconstructions. And, um, and it's also useful for research to make uh, alignment between scene to be able to align to ground truths and make evaluations. 
we have also improved a little bit the command line. So now uh, you can create your scene in Meshroom, save it um, as a standard MG file, and then use that as an input pipeline uh, for the command line and a um, few other adjustments that could be really useful. Uh, there is also a new node to uh, export the result directly uh, from Meshroom to Sketchfab. Um, and uh, also, uh, there is a new option to uh, directly from the 2D viewer uh, being able to visualize the uh, intermediate steps or the def map. Um, so here we can see the def map in 2D and then we can also import it in 3D. So here we see the def map uh, after filtering, but uh, we can select the node that we want to see. So if we have multiple def map with different parameters, etc., and here we can see the def map before filtering and after filtering. So we can see that before filtering, we, we have a lot of uh, noise and a lot of input candidates and that are selected to get the filtered version. And then when all the def map are fused all together, we get the final mesh. Uh, there is also a new node for image processing. So it's a preliminary work to be able to make some uh, pre-processing of your images uh, directly within the Meshroom pipeline. And, um, but this node can also be used on its own to make some conversion. Uh, we have also improved the parameter system. So now the parameters are dynamic. So uh, when you change one parameter, you, uh, you see only the, uh, uh, the relevant one for the, uh, on your nodes. And it's also um, uh, changed in validation system. So now only the parameters that are really used by the process are used in the invalidation system. Uh, if we go um, more deeper in the library, uh, there is a new option on the feature matching to be able to uh, directly uh, estimate uh, the, some distortion directly uh, during the feature matching. So this allows to recover more feature points when you have some uh, images with large distortion, uh, like GoPro images, for instance. And th there is a lot of... Uh, really small improvement in many places. And, um, and in particular, uh, regarding the metadata support and the support of more raw images. So uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the, the team from OpenImage.io for all the fixes they have made for us. And that's uh, really useful. And uh, so everything is, uh, is uh, on GitHub. And uh, so it's under the Mozilla license. Uh, and uh, we provide uh, Windows and Linux uh, binaries. And so uh, the next release will be uh, uh, coming in a few weeks. I think I'm sure that, that will be a question that we raise. When will be the next release? So now we're going to take, talk a little bit of the further steps uh, of the project, as we can see it from now. Uh, so one of the extension could be uh, the possibility of having uh, an automatic camera tracking after the shooting uh, because in fact the evaluation of the live action camera uh, can take advantage of the structure from motion algorithm. So the idea is to uh, uh, base the, the first structure of motion of, on the point clouds of the 3D reconstruction of the set and then to add uh, the analysis of the live action camera. So this is only a preliminary test on our production shots. But as you can see, uh, this, uh, we can already get some interesting results. So we've been working on that. Um, the, the, the main idea behind all this is to combine all the data acquisition on set uh, within Meshroom. So we have the 3D reconstruction of the set. We have the HD panorama, which is now available in the next release. And the idea is to augment this uh, process with the live action camera tracking all done within the same tools uh, with the random farm possibility uh, and all the nodes that are available uh, within uh, Meshroom. Uh, that the idea is to improve even better the productivity of uh, the data acquisition on set and uh, to facilitate the integration within uh, the VFX pipeline. 
Fabien, you want to talk about the test map? <laughs> yeah, the map is one really uh, critical step of the pipeline because we are we have uh, that's where we have uh, most of the data to process. So it's critical both in terms of performances and in terms of quality. Uh, so we have made a lot of experimentation during this year, and uh, but it's still challenging to improve the performance while keeping compatibility with all card. Uh, so, but that's something that definitely. Uh, needs to be continued uh, this year. And uh, on the more research side of the project, um, we have finalized the PhD thesis uh, this year. Uh, so we provide um, a first prototype for the estimation of the lighting of the scene and being able to use this lighting information to refine the geometry. And, uh, and we will continue this work with a new partnership between Mikos and Irit. Uh, to uh, integrate this uh, prototype into Meshroom and, uh, and in the more long term go further and, uh, and try to analyze uh, surface material properties. Okay, uh, now we're going to say a few words on, on our community. So uh, Meshroom and Nice Vision in fact uh, is being used by uh, various industries, not only uh, the VFX industry. Uh, it's been used by the medical industries on the left hand side. You can see that there are some guys uh, in Clermont-Ferrand doing some surgical augmented reality. Uh, what they do is they do the, the 3D reconstruction of the organ that has been scanned before in order to help the, the camera tracking uh, during the operation. Uh, in the middle, you have the classical uh, usage of photogrammetry for cultural heritage, for instance. We give you here an example or for the architecture uh, design. Uh, with uh, uh, an interesting integration of mushroom pipeline. And on the right hand side, we have uh, uh, the people in Inter Digital that we know pretty well. Uh, we are making this digital double uh, uh, project. Uh, here we can see what they are doing for the, uh, the face acquisition, the face 3D scanning. And what's interesting here, we can see that they've uh, used the possibility of integrating their production pipeline uh, into Meshroom um, to be able to design their custom nodes uh, uh, regarding the interaction with third-party software or acquisition or whatever. So it's a pretty and good... That's a good example of uh, why we have built uh, software on the Nodal pipeline because uh, there is a lot of use cases for photogrammetry, a lot of different constraints depending on your acquisition setup. Uh, your acquisition condition also in terms of lighting, etc. And uh, so your input can change a lot. So you may have to uh, create some uh, specific preprocessing or specific way to declare the relationship and your constraints you have. And, um, and also in output, uh, you get the first uh, mesh from this uh, measurement. Uh, you can add an extra layer of interpretation to use that in for specific needs. So that's why it's really important to have this pipeline so people can build their own, uh, so they can adjust the input and adjust the output. Uh, the community also has been for a great help uh, to build up the online documentations, uh, which is made around the Read the Docs framework. So we, we, have, we can take the opportunity today to thanks again the people who have been helping us for setting up this, com this uh, documentation. Uh, of course, uh, more contributions are welcome and we give you here the link to, if you want to contribute uh, to the documentation of Meshroom. Um, so uh, the, 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 the project is a collaborative project since the beginning. Uh, here we remind you uh, the academic partners uh, that have been helping us for, for years uh, to start up this project. Uh, but of course, uh, more people are welcome, uh, whether you are a researcher, whether you are a developer, you are a 3D photogrammetry expert, you are more than welcome to join us because we are always interested in, uh, in sharing uh, new ideas, uh, start new collaboration, because uh, this is the way the project has been uh, started from the beginning. And uh, today we have an announcement uh, to, to do. So after these 10 years of collaboration uh, with uh, the 3D computer vision people, we have decided to create uh, a nonprofit organization around Meshroom, uh, built around the, the founding members of, of the project. Um, we have seen also that over the years, the, the, the project has received a lot of interest and requests uh, from uh, other industries uh, that go in fact beyond the initial objectives. Um, uh, that makes a lot of different use cases, different uh, acquisition systems, like Fabia mentioned. 
And so this is challenging to address within the same solution, but uh, we think there is a great convergence uh, opportunity uh, uh, regarding the needs of uh, uh, the low level blocks that are building uh, um, uh, Alice Vision framework. And uh, we think uh, Meshroom can be a good help to, to build up these different pipelines. Uh, so that's what it's important for us to continue build up this uh, open source ecosystem uh, to take advantage of the different use case and the different data sets to improve uh, the, the software. Of course, when you, the objective of uh, the association is to participate uh, to the financing of uh, extra resources uh, with donations and uh, sponsorships and uh, globally uh, the, the the objective of the association is to help us to build a better software <laughs> uh, okay uh, i think it's time we got uh, yeah we got we got a uh, plenty of time to have uh, to answer to some of your questions uh, so we're gonna get through uh, the q a of the zoom uh, the first question is, yeah, yeah, do you plan to support ACs? Is there a roadmap to combine LIDAR and flowgrammetry? So that's two questions. <laughs> so for the first question, so regarding ACs, uh, so that's something that we uh, looked at, but uh, that's not so easy regarding the SLR, because in our case, we are, for photogrammetry, uh, we are working from the SLR, and um, and uh, there are some projects uh, to uh, use, convert uh, SLR images to ACs, but that's not straightforward because uh, the ACs rely on, um, on the manufacturer to provide the uh, um, input uh, data, transfer. data transfer function. And, uh, and so it's not provided for the SLR. So, um, so that's something that we would be interested to discuss with uh, people from ACs. Uh, Obviously. And there was a second question because uh, there was two questions in one uh, regarding the leader integration, which has been raised uh, for a long time. So <laughs> <laughs> we have a, a few bits of answers around this. Yeah, we have made um, some experimentation. We have implemented a different approach to make the alignments. And, uh, and now we need to, uh, to make the proper integration, the user interface to, uh, to connect uh, all that together and make it usable by a graphic artist at the end. Uh, next question is when the next version build will be released? Any time estimation? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, that's always difficult to, uh, to answer that because uh, always uh, at the end we have uh, all the tiny things that need to be fixed to um, provide a, a proper release. Uh, but uh, we hope that we will be able to do that in a few weeks. And of course, we are testing this next release uh, with, uh, within uh, Technical or production services now. That's also uh, important for us to test it in production before releasing it in open source. So, this is uh, where we are now. Uh, next question is uh, Does Mission prefer undistorted or distorted original rectilinear images? Um, so, it depends on your quality of your own distortion. <laughs> um, but uh, so, basically, uh, both will work. Uh, if you have already undistorted your images, you, you may uh, want to lock your, um, uh, your parameters because you have already solved it and then it will try to solve it again. Um, okay. What else? I just answer live. Um, this one you have already answered. Uh, have you already noticed this? This is this is one of the question now. This it's a it's a Facebook research uh, link to consistent depth uh, estimation uh, with the code release. Yeah, we, yeah, know, we, we know this paper. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we have seen the release. It's really interesting. We have not tested it yet, but uh, it would be really cool to to test and see how it how it reacts. Is there any plan plan to support non NVIDIA cards? He's asking an anonymous attendee. <laughs> um, so that's uh, so non NVIDIA would mean maybe MD. <laughs> um, so I don't know if you mean uh, CPU version or if you mean uh, GPU version for the cards. Um, uh, so the point is that the dev map is really uh, a critical step in terms of performance. So 
uh, with the algorithms that we have implemented now, it would make no sense to do that on CPU uh, because it's uh, too computation intensive. But it's also what why it gives this robustness to the result. Um, uh, so yeah. So on that said, we don't have uh, any plan uh, soon to to make a non-NVIDIA version, but. Uh, but uh, obviously, if there is some initiative from the community, we will be really happy to support it. And, uh, and also, uh, what would make sense, in my opinion, would be to uh, integrate uh, other uh, implementation and other alternatives for CPU uh, with a completely different method. And, uh, and that would be also interesting to be able to compare them uh, in the same system. So is maybe an answer in it? Yes. yes. Uh, Ah, ah OpenCL, open Vulkan, GPU. Yeah, the, no. <laughs> <laughs> Short answer is right. <laughs> no, no, it, it's, it's, uh, it's really a different way to formulate the problem. Yes, OpenCL could be a way, but it's also uh, uh, really complex to, to transfer it. Another question is, do you support 3D protocol, free like a uh, free, F R E E D protocol to motorize PTZ camera heads. Uh, I'm not, not yet, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not aware of it. So if you can uh, add an issue on the repository, uh, that would be cool with the links, so we can look at it, and that should be uh, quite easy to add. We can say that we are supporting the the motorized head uh, used for the round shots, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, uh, which has a specific XML. Uh, Export. Yeah, it's uh, X-Drive yeah. or something. Like X-Drive, yeah. But not uh, this one, yeah, yeah. This is a protocol used But if you put an issue on the GitHub uh, with a link, uh, that would be interesting to support, for sure. Uh, does Meshroom follow the VFX reference platform? Good question. <laughs> yes, uh, we are trying to follow it uh, as much as possible. So not for Qt, because uh, we have too much uh, uh, needs to have the latest versions uh, but for all the steps for the compiler for the environment uh, etc we are we are relying on it okay uh, is it possible to use meshroom with video with video inputs yeah yeah uh, so in the new version when you drop a video in meshroom it will create a new node for uh, extracting keyframe for your video um, so it's not a magic solution, so you may have to make some adjustment on the keyframe selection because it's really difficult to find um, uh, a system that works for all kinds of video. It really depends if your video are with really high quality, if you, are, uh, um, if you have a lot of uncheck or, or not, if you, if you are on a drone, etc. So you may have to adjust some parameters, but it will extract keyframes. And, and then from that, you have to put them back into Meshroom again. So it's not uh, uh, fully transparent. Yeah, but we can say that some people using drones have been using Meshroom already, uh, to even yeah. to make a, a rough camera tracking of the drone. So everything is possible. Uh, does Meshroom will create orthophoto in the future? Yeah, that's a request that's we, a we have. Frédéric asking that. Yeah. We have a lot. So that's something we don't really need. Uh, so, but that's something that would really make sense, uh, uh, and I hope that will with the association, uh, with the new association, we will have resources to do this kind of uh, features that are a bit uh, out of our scope. Okay, uh, I don't think I don't know if we have uh, some other questions in the live chat, but because uh, uh, we're going to check just just in case. Uh, we have, uh, while Fabien is doing that. Of course, uh, we have a channel in the Academy Software uh, Slack. So if anybody wants to ask uh, further question or if we miss something, it's a good time for us to say that we can, uh, we can catch up uh, later on uh, in this channel of uh, ASWF uh, Slack. Um, another one, would it be possible to pre-filter input images by quality, as in detect noise, uh, as in detect motion blur, out of focus, remove or decrease the weight of uh, images in the solve? This is a question from a check. Yeah, so that's really a good question. Uh, so there are two things. 
so it it would make sense to uh, to have a pre-filter step in, in input to uh, uh, really um, uh, remove the images that are really too low quality. But then it will also make sense to uh, really take into account the the blur uh, and. Um, and uh, so there are some um, some uh, researchers that are working on uh, on uh, focus tacking using Meshroom, and uh, so I, I hope that with this uh, collaboration we will be able to improve that. Some people from Australia, yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, do we have other questions? If not, again, you can use uh, the Slack channel. I think. Let me check back again. Uh, this one is done. Yeah. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you everyone for joining us. Yes, uh, again, good update guys. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for uh, the compliment. Again, we want to thank you the Academy Software Foundation to invite us to this uh, uh, open source panel. Uh, because it's been a, a, an interesting year, as everybody says, uh, for everybody. Um, uh, ah, we have we have another one. We can take another one because does it affect Meshroom if the images are optically or digitally stabilized on the camera level? That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it will uh, it will affect. Yeah. So yeah, as much as possible, we try to to you, get the, the raw images. Yeah. From yeah. You, if you have a solution to disable it, that that would uh, help. Uh, I know that yeah, on the other side you will get more motion blur, and uh, but um, but yeah, it will affect the uh, geometric estimation. But uh, I have not made an intensive test to see uh, how how far it will really decrease. But uh, in principle, it will decrease uh, really. Okay, I think we are good. Uh, so, thanks again. Yeah. Take care Thank of yourself, you. take care of your beloved, and uh, we'll catch you up online uh, due over the, the different uh, channels. You have here the links uh, to join us, and uh, we'll keep up the good work. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.